serious? Are you serious, guys? Are you serious? It just happened. It just now happened. Another one. This one bigger than the last two. This one massive. This one the largest one in over six years. I'll be telling you all about it in just a second. Real fast, just a real fast reminder. Take your meds if you live in the villages. No, uh, real fast reminder. Uh, uh, PastorPaulGold.com. That's www.PastorPaulGold.com. Guys, seriously, take a look at all of the things that you have to do when you look at the economy and you look at all the situations developing, the taxation, the migration, the interest rates, uh, the frustration, the Obama administration. Yeah, you, you, why with, in this crazy world you're in, you don't wanna just let your uh, savings accounts just sit there and uh, lose money uh, or actually not do any well good for you. So here's the thing to do. Just go to www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com or pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347 and tell them that Pastor Paul Begley sent you there. And they're also giving away a, a quarter of an ounce gold coin to everyone that qualifies with a gold or silver IRA or rollover that 401k. That's at pastorpaulgold.com. All right, guys, the biggest one we've seen in years just happen. Now, I already did a video earlier today on these two massive solar flares back to back. Uh, one was the X-Class 1.8 solar flare. The other one was an X-Class 1.7 solar flare. Then I was just about ready to go live, check my emails, and BP Earthwatch had sent me a email and it said, Paul, it's happened again, basically. And so it's a, I went and checked it out and he was right. It, it was an X class 6.3. Are you serious? X class 6.3 solar flare just erupted on the surface of the sun coming straight at us. And the, the first two we had there, I believe are the ones that knocked out all the cell phone outages. Now, at first, when they reported this morning, they said the cell phone out outages was only AT&T and was only 55,000 people. Well, I was one of the 55,000, if that's the case. But then uh, I, I read an article that said it couldn't have been the solar flares that did it because it would have knocked out more people than just AT&T. And then, about 30 minutes later, I got the report. It was over a million and a half people, and it included AT&T, Verizon, Cricket Wireless, and T-Mobile. All had customers in the thousands that had lost their internet. So, I mean, their cell phone, and didn't get it back for hours. So it, it couldn't be, so when they say it wasn't a solar flare, it had to have been a hack, now you have to say it was the solar flares because it did affect AT&T, Verizon, Cricket Wireless, T-Mobile, and I think maybe some others, but for sure those four. And so we just had 6.3 solar flare, folks, just now happened. This one way bigger, stronger, and more powerful. I want to thank BP Earthwatch for letting me know that. As a matter of fact, speaking of BP Earthwatch, he's going to be one of the speakers in this unbelievable webinar we're doing. It's March the 22nd. You need to write this down. Go to Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite. I tell you what, check your email. Check your email. You got an email from Heidi uh, about what, Heidi, an hour ago maybe? Not even an hour ago. Check your email. You just got an email from Heidi and uh, read all of the stuff that's going on. It's unbelievable, the events that are taking place. But you can get your tickets tonight for this uh, webinar. It's called The Apocalyptic Signs. It's March 22nd at 6 p.m. on a Friday night. And we're listen who we've got, Pastor Mark Biltz. And I guess he has really studied out the solar eclipse, the sign in the heavens, 
and it's going to be an incredible presentation. So is my co-author of Revelation 9-11, Troy Anderson. He'll be speaking. And Mike Kerr and Jeannie Moore will be teaming up. Of course, they're going to have this incredible um, um, conference in uh, Dallas, Texas, April the 5th through April the 8th, the day of the solar eclipse. We're going to actually go out and watch it from Dallas, from the conference. Uh, also, Rex Bear is going to be giving us a presentation of all the different apocalyptic events going on in the heavens. Uh, and so is BP Earthwatch, who is watching. And of course, Mike from around the world. And my son, Bart Begley, BC Begley with another documentary, and yours truly, Pastor Paul. I'm going to tell you how many places in the Bible we're told to watch the stars, the sun, the moon, and the, the signs in the heavens. It's all pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. And Heidi Begley has a tremendous presentation that she'll be doing at the Hear the Watchman conference. She's speaking, I'm speaking, and she's also speaking. And she is absolutely, God has revealed some things to her that's incredible about the solar eclipse. But let's go right back to the main story tonight. I wanna welcome all 1,400 of you that are already gathering. Yes, we have breaking news. Another one has hit, another massive one, another huge uh, explosion, this time in just an eruption on the sun. This one bigger than the, the last two that we had, but over, but still, it don't matter. X class 1.8, X class 1.7, and now in the last half hour, X class 6.3, the largest in about seven years, and it's from the same sunspot, AR3590. This is the strongest flare of the solar cycle 25. This is the third X flare in 24 hour period. This is unbelievable. Stay tuned folks. I'm telling you throughout the night, we may lose internet. We may lose more cell phones and cell towers. There may be even uh, the power grids the electric grids could go out in some nations, including America. It just depends where the strength of this CMEs hit on the earth. And then again, guys, I'd almost guarantee, and I'm going to be asking Mike from around the world this tonight, I'd almost guarantee we're going to have a mega earthquake. I'm, I'm just saying, look for one 7.0 and anywhere from 7.0 to 8.0 or maybe even more. I mean, this could be the time that the big one hits all over the world. And so let me just read about this solar flare that just happened. And there's something going on. They don't want us to know about these solar flares. They don't want us to know about Planet X. They don't want you to know about the incoming asteroids, including Apophis. There's a lot of dancing and a lot of denying and a lot of misinformation coming to us from the mainstream media and a lot of dancing on the head of a pen by some of the uh, 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 scientific community. But we can't deny, and they admit that these solar flares are erupting. They admit Apophis is gonna come by and scrape by. They even admit in 1983 that they found Planet X. In 1992, they decided to scrap that ideal and call it a conspiracy theory. But in 1983, they show you they found it. They tell you they found it. Even the New York Times and the Washington Post posted articles explaining how they found Planet X. But now they don't want you to know about. Now, this this another major solar flare. This was a massive, huge, the biggest one we've seen in seven years. Earth orbiting satellites have just detected an incredible X class 6.3 solar flare releasing UV rays, cosmic rays, radiation, um, plasma eruption from this filament, solar for CMEs. Incredible. Uh, they have uh, recognized it just happened. This is the strongest flare 
of this entire solar cycle 25 that we're in, maximum uh, solar max cycle 25, and it's the third X-class solar flare to come in a 24-hour period, which is insane. Stay tuned, folks, before the night is over. Wait till the CMEs hit the earth. Wait till the pressure builds. Uh, I'm afraid we could see anything. As I said, power grids could go out, uh, satellite, internet, GPS. We don't know uh, just exactly uh, what could take place with something this large. And now you have three in a row in 24 hours. Sunspot, you can see using the eclipse glasses, uh, this if you went and got the eclipse glasses, you could look at the sun right now and see this insane sunspot, AR3590, where these three incredible massive solar flares erupted, ripping apart the atmosphere of the sun. Can you imagine that? You could actually see it. And, we're, and uh, so you had the massive solar flare, you had the double I'm seeing double vision. That's right, double solar flares at uh, X class 1.8 and then X class 1.7. And then with about an hour to go before the 24 hour period was up, an incredible, huge, off the chart X class 6.3. We've got to ask Mike from around the world, what is going on? Is there more to come? Has something ha happened? Is this the effects of Planet X? So I really want you to make sure you get your tickets for the webinar. Our webinar is called The Apocalyptic Signs, and they are. And, and you know what? We, 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 made our, we felt led of the Lord to do this webinar because of the solar eclipse, because of the coming of Apophis, because of the, the solar uh, eclipses that are going across America because of the uh, intense um, heaven heaven pressures. And then after we announced it a week ago, we get this three major solar events. Now remember, Mike around the world said something. Back on February, I believe it was Heidi, February 19th, he said in 40 days, something is going to happen. I've got to, we got to revisit that. Uh, we have to revisit that. Is it the five waves of energy? And is what we are witnessing now with this incredible eruption on the sun for the third time in 24 hours, what does this all mean? Extreme ultraviolet radiation from these flares have ionized the top of the Earth's atmosphere, causing Shortwave radio blackouts over Hawaii and Australia. Mariners and ham radio operators in those areas may have noticed the loss of their signals at all frequencies below 30 megahertz. Increasingly, neither explosion, talk about the first two, uh, as they come out of the sun's atmosphere. This means that there was a double flares uh, will, it will cause these geomagnetic storms on the earth, but the pressure, the pressure that's going to build, uh, it, it's created an unstable beta gamma delta magnetic field that harbors energy uh, for additional X class explosions. Now that's what we reported to you earlier today. And guess what? That prediction came true about an hour ago when an X class 6.3, the largest one in seven years, just tore a hole in the atmosphere of the sun and has created what could very well be power grids, destruction of satellites, GPS coordinates, and a whole lot more. Now, cell phone outages can come from extreme powerful X-class solar flares. And the two that we had earlier today apparently did that to the cell phone outages that were experienced at AT&T, Verizon, Cricket Wireless, and T-Mobile. All of them experiencing here in America 
massive outages. That's That happened in the first two. We just had, the sun has just released the 6.3. So the earth hasn't even encountered yet the all the uh, pressure and all of the geomagnetic disru- disruption that's coming from this 6.3 X class that just happened an hour ago. So we, uh, we're anticipating this to uh, something insane. Um, look, overshadowed by today's double X flare and now tonight's 6.3, a magnetic filament erupted from the sun's northern hemisphere back on the 20- yesterday on February 21st. And some of that debris may hit the earth. That's that was even the X class. So that wasn't even the, the three solar flares. This is from the, an explosive filament erupting off the surface of the sun. The snapping filament hurled a bright CME into space. The bulk of the cloud will sail harmlessly ahead of our planet. However, a NASA model <coughs> of this CME predicts that the CME's flank will graze the Earth. Uh, on February 25th, on Sunday. Uh, This could spark a minor G1-class geomagnetic storm. Just throwing that in to go along with everything else. The sun is exploding. It's erupting. It's ripping. The the sunspots are enormous. And the danger zone is here. And so, and meanwhile, while all this is going on, guys, today, one, two, three, four, Four asteroids went past the Earth. One of them, uh, 0.6 lunar distance. That is uh, closer uh, to the Earth. It's about halfway between the Earth and the moon, okay? It's about halfway between the Earth and the moon. So again, another dangerous asteroid going by. All of this taking place in the heavens And Jesus said, there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea, the waves would be roaring and men's hearts would fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall we see the son of man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up. Lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing nigh. Well, ever since we've come to Indiana this week, uh, checking on everything up here with the ministry and checking on my mom and dad as well, uh, I can tell you it looks like that the prophetic word, uh, the sun tearing apart, it's just ripping apart. Now, I'll be back in Florida, though, by Sunday morning. I'll be preaching, Lord willing, under the big tent Uh, and uh, I'm being stirred in my spirit right now on the prophetic things that are happening. Oh, by the way, there was a fireball. Just throw this at you. A fireball just soared, just (laughs) through the heavens. It was visually seen, very bright, and seen in 12 different states across America. We had that going on. Got that going for you. Um, And so... These apocalyptic signs, this webinar that we're gonna have on March 22nd, starting at six o'clock, don't miss it. Don't, whatever you do, Mark Biltz, Troy Anderson, Mike Kerr and Jeannie Moore, Rex Baer, BP Earthwatch, Jesse Waltman. uh, And Bart Begley and myself, all of us will be speaking, maybe even more at this webinar. We need you to be prepared for this. Check your email, check your email, check your email because Heidi sent it one out. If you don't see it, check your spam, ma'am. Check your spam, man, because it might be there, okay? And if you don't, if you're not on uh, Heidi's email list, absolutely, a request to be, okay? Send an email to MsZD01 at hotmail.com. Send an email to MsZD01 at hotmail.com and let her know you want to be on Heidi's email list, okay? So you can always stay up to date. Wow, 
Now, while all this is going on, we also have a, a very disturbing report that 56,000, 56,000 barrels of radioactive waste, highly toxic, were dumped into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California in between 19, in the 1940s. So it was about middle 1945, 46, somewhere in there, 1940s to 1960. So for about 15 years, uh, the uh, United States government using probably the military, um, you know, I, I don't know which branch or what, but certainly the Department of Defense involved in this uh, radioactive uh, production dumped 56,000 barrels straight into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. And this, these barrels of radioactive waste were of tritium, uh, carbon-14, and also D DDT. These are, you know, excessive, um, uh, that's an excessive amount of raw radioactive material pouring into the Pacific. These barrels were not sealed. They just poured them, okay? So you're, you're talking 56,000 barrels of pure waste, radioactive waste, and uh, that's still there, um, okay? So it's, it's really, um, it's very, very, very disturbing. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> this means that, you know, there's been a lot of radioactive water, a lot of radioactive harm to the marine life now for over 60 years. And you have to wonder how much more is this? This is a report that we're just now getting declassified. My question is just how much really uh, the, has the world with all these nukes and all these centrifuges uh, and all of this uranium and plutonium and tr tritium and uh, all of these, uh, uh, you know, radioactive uh, material with rogue nations now in possession of it, how much is really being dumped in the oceans of the earth and just how toxic has the fish and the marine life and the water systems uh, and, and the rain, the acid rain coming down after it's evaporated up with this material. Just how much are we being uh, uh, poisoned from the air and the water, from the runoff uh, as the rain comes in over the last 60 years. And, you know, just when you start thinking about the cancer rates and start thinking about all the different health problems people have been suffering here in America and around the world, I have to ask the question, uh, you, you know, what were you thinking? I mean, basically, what were they thinking? Um also, there's more going on here I want to tell you about. We just got huge news, huge, huge news coming out of Israel. Uh, Benny Gantz, uh, Benny Gantz has just said that if there isn't a ceasefire agreement uh, soon, and that has to, and not, not a two-state solution either, but a ceasefire only has one condition. All hostages has to be released. And if not, soon, Israel's IDF is going to absolutely tear Rafa City apart there in southern Gaza, and they'll do it during Ramadan. You heard me. So basically what Israel's saying, if you want a ceasefire through Ramadan, you got to give every one of the hostages back, period. Dead or alive. We know that some of them are probably dead, but you got to give us back. We think about 30 are dead, but there's still 150 over in, in, in uh, hostages, approximate. You got to give them all to Israel. You got to give them all. And then Israel will give you a ceasefire at least through Ramadan. 
But then, after Ramadan, Israel will continue to destroy Hamas. So this is the deal on the table. And Benny Gantz, who's on the war cabinet of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, you know, is a strong, I mean, strong military leader. It has been his whole life, really. So this is a huge information coming out of Israel. Um, meanwhile, the whole world has been applying incredible pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu and the government of Israel by trying to get and, and, and putting pressure like you wouldn't believe, not only to get Israel to stop their offensive initiative in this war, but to agree to let there be a Palestinian state and part the land. I mean, so if you're Israel, you get attacked, 1,200 of your citizens get butchered, another 250 get held hostage, some of them being killed. We don't know what they're doing to them. And while this is all going on, you're, the, at the end result is give up half of your country to those who attacked you. I mean, this is a ludicrous, really. This is a ludicrous request. But it's not a request. It's almost a global mandate. If they were to vote for this on the, in the General Assembly, it would, without a question, would pass about 90% of the nations of the world would say, part the land. And if, he, and if they could, they'd even say, part it, whether Israel goes along with it or not. Do it by force. Now, uh, even though President Joe Biden is for a two-state solution, he's still holding the line by vetoing at the UN Security Council, he's the only one. The other four have already caved. The Russians, of course, and the Chinese, that's easy. But now even the British and the French are saying, let's take it to a vote at the General Assembly. Only the United States is using their veto power to hold back this resolution and vote from the General Assembly. But, but the agenda that the whole world wants, including President Biden, is a two-state solution. Let me just remind everybody, I remember, I'll never forget this moment. I believe it was in 2015. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick had already been shot in uh, an assassinations bullet in 2014, in October, late October 2014. He was shot four times and survived. He uh, saw my YouTube video that I had asked the whole world to pray for him, both Christians and Jews. He survived miraculously. He saw my video and he requested to find me and, and have me come to Israel and meet him. And I did. We became close friends. Then he got elected to the Knesset and was one of the members miraculously. So I went to visit him, actually interview him at his office in the Knesset. Um, but as I was the, making my way to Israel that time, uh, there was a huge meeting going on among 21 nations in France, in Paris. And in that 21 nations gathered there, they voted 21 to zero to uh, put together a two-state solution and to bring it to the world and to basically try to force it upon Israel. This was back, you know, again, nine years ago. And I remember walking into Rabbi Yehuda Glick's office and saying to him, um, and I interviewed him, and it's on YouTube, you can find the interview. And I said to him, what are you gonna do? What, what is the, what is you, are you gonna do? You're a member of the Knesset. What is the Israeli government going to do if they force you to a two-state solution, they just passed it in Paris 21 to nothing. What are you gonna do? And I never, I'll never forget him slamming his desk with both hands, slamming his desk and saying, never, never, there will never be a two-state solution. And uh, so here we are nine years later, 
and the attack on October 7th and the world's at war and the nations are now turning on Israel. They've already turned on Israel. Now they're to the point they want to drive home and force Israel to give up half of its nation, including half of the city of Jerusalem, which is what President Donald Trump had already declared the eternal city of God, the capital of Jerusalem, and moved his embassy, the U.S. embassy there, and, uh, and made that declaration, which was fulfillment of Bible prophecy in itself. So all of these things I'm telling you are in the Bible. The book of uh, Joel chapter three says that the whole world will come down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and God will plead with the world not to part his land. And uh, so we're there, that prophecy, Joel chapter three, we're right there. We're also in Psalms 83, when the whole world will build, there will be this confederacy of nations, a conspiracy of nations who will say, uh, come, let us destroy Israel. Let us wipe them off from the face of the earth that it never be remembered again. We're hearing those very words from the Iranians. And speaking of the Iranians and the Russians, let's talk about that. Let's talk about hundreds and hundreds of missiles have been uh, sold to the Russians from Iran. Hundreds and hundreds of missiles have, have just trained, changed hands from the Iranians to the Russians. The Russians are now using them. They've just captured the, the city there, Adivik. Uh, they've, they, and also today they took a couple more villages, another some one or two more smaller towns. They have taken hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers prisoners of war now, POW. Uh, there is the, the Russian military moving more and more deeper into the country. And uh, Ukraine is admitting they're running out of material, they're running out of weaponry. And really, to be honest with you, the United States uh, public has uh, run out of patience and we're running out of money. Uh, to fund this thing. And so there's a, this is why you're beginning to hear, that's why they haven't passed any more billions of dollars to be sent to Ukraine, because really um, it looks like Russia has, is where, you know, winning the war of attrition here. And um, meanwhile, what is Iran gonna do with all this cash? What is Iran gonna do with all this cash? that they got from Russia for selling them their missiles. Well, you know what Iran's gonna do. They're gonna turn around and use it for their war machine uh, as they continue to, you know, they'll use it for their economy to some degree, but they'll also use it for their war machine to help uh, try to prop up Hamas the best they can, but certainly to supply Hezbollah and Southern Lebanon and uh, the Houthi rebels that are, shooting at the ships in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean from Yemen. Um, and they'll prop up, no doubt, uh, Syria, uh, as Syria is setting up along the um, Golan Heights on the other side of the border of Israel, along with Iranian and Russian forces, all in the Middle East and Syria, guys. This thing is really getting... Uh, intense and dangerous, and I'm telling you, there is, there is a, we're at a point that when I look at prophecy, I see what's happening in Russia and Europe, and we already had this, we already heard Russia say that uh, as they make in their move, that uh, the Baltic states are, um, they're considering and if you're considering those Baltic states, then you're probably considering Poland, Romania, um, Hungary, and S Slovakia. And those nations all know they're in the path. And so, and, it, and it's not like Russia hasn't 
attacked Romania and Poland before because they did and they and they used to control Poland and Romania were under Russian rule even I mean look there's people that uh, the, the communists were in control of those nations right up until the end of World War II so you know with the mentality and even today I did a video earlier today where Russia even threatened France. Now, France had planes flying over international waters and international airspace over at the Black Sea. Russia threatened to shoot those planes out of the sky. A matter of fact, even uh, some of their defense secretaries uh, out of the Kremlin in Moscow said they will. If, if France keeps flying too close, they will shoot their planes out of the sky. This is a, a, a threat of war, really, to France and the, and the Allied forces, of course, or the, or the NATO nations. And so we're watching that happen right now, uh, another major concern. Um, so... You've got all of these things happening simultaneously, okay? And oh, by the way, while we're talking, let's just go ahead and spill the beans on the Associated Press. Now, you heard that there were some foreign um, press or reporters that were embedded with the Hamas uh, attack on October 7th. Now we're hearing that uh, some of those reporters were certainly from the Associated Press. As a matter of fact, the Associated Press today uh, uh, reported that families of the victims, families of the terror victims in Israel have filed a lawsuit against the Associated Press because of those reporters that were embedded in this attack by Hamas. And the Associated Press is the one telling us that they have just been sued by the families of the terror victims that have died. And that's a lot of families, okay, when you're talking over 1,200 people. So this is a major lawsuit. Uh, and why in the world would the Associated Press be embedded on an attack on a terror attack, why would you do that? You're saying, well, they're the press, they gotta cover what's going on. No, 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 you, you can go cover a war once it's erupted, once the, the, you know, the thing is broken wide open. But this wasn't the case. This was a secret, demonic, de destructive, uh, devilish attack that they knew about and were involved in and went across the, the, the border into Israel to cover it. This is unbelievable. I mean, this really is unbelievable. Um, and so we've got that going on, okay? Now, there is a bit of good news, if you think it's good news, that the United States just landed the Adesus, I think you pronounce it, Asus, Adesus, oh, Anyway, it's a Land Rover type spacecraft that we just landed on the moon. And I actually was watching the NASA channel live uh, in my office here in Indiana when they uh, contacted the um, craft, the spacecraft landing module that landed on the moon and they, uh, all systems were go. It was a successful landing and it's the first time that the United States has landed on the moon in 52 years. If you believe that they haven't been secret space program, hasn't been already on the moon building bases and maybe even already on Mars. Now, there's a lot of discussion about that, but as far as the public is concerned, this is the first time the United States has went back to the moon in 52 years. Why? is a question, and what does this all mean? Is it because of the Space Force? Is it because of the threat 
by nations like China and uh, Russia and the United States and some others uh, maybe to, that are threatening uh, EMP uh, detonations of nuclear weapons in space. Uh, is the moon needing to be a defense location? And has that already been done? And now they're just now starting to let us know about it. You know, um, I think maybe that's probably the case. But either way, these things are happening now so quickly. So, so quickly. So Mike around the world is going to be joining us tonight. Uh, and we're going to talk about these massive solar flares. I mean, how can you not? And, and there's three of them. One's X class 1.8. Then there was an X class, 1.7. And then we just had a little over an hour and a half ago, an X class 6.3 that just literally tore through the atmosphere of the sun, ripping a hole in the sun and releasing so much power and pressure and UV rays, uh, cosmic rays, tons of radiation coming into our, headed toward the earth. Uh, what does this all mean? And I think it could mean uh, certainly a major earthquake, you know, besides cell, cellular uh, loss of cellular cell phones uh, at AT&T or Verizon or Cricket Wireless or T-Mobile, Okay. Uh, no doubt about it. It's uh, it's incredible what's happening here. Those all of those cell phone outages happened because of the two solar flares, and now we have this massive third one, all in 24 hours. Is this is this because the effects of Planet X? Are we? You know, they don't want to talk to us about it. They don't. They always want to say, "Well, the solar flares," you know. They don't want to tell us about, we can't get a clear answer, a clear discussion even on what's going on with the solar flares on the sun, the CMEs. Certainly we can't get a straight answer on Apophis and all of these different asteroids that are uh, approaching the earth and this galactical belt. And we can't, we get flat out, got told one thing and then totally changed. Planet X, as it's moving closer, apparently, this binary system uh, into our solar system. I mean, uh, you know, there's no denying that. So I, I'm thinking that, um, and then we had this fireball that went across 12 states across America yesterday around 6.30 in Eastern time uh, through in the Eastern states and the Midwest. It was basically seen. 12 different states, very bright uh, and, and extraordinary uh, fireball that nobody saw coming. No one warned us. Maybe they didn't know about it. Uh, and because some of these are, are t hard to detect, but all of this is happening uh, with the signs in the heavens. So let me just say this, two things to remember. In the 14 years that we've been reporting on current world events and doing uh, prophecy uh, and news updates and explaining how the current events are actually, a lot of it are tying directly with the Bible prophecies. Okay, and that's why we wrote the book Revelation 9-11. It's being released on March 26th. If you haven't pre-ordered yours, you should do that right away. Order five of them because you're going to need to give four of them away. It explains everything that's going on in these end times and the plan of salvation, the great harvest. You'll be a part of that. You need, uh, you need to keep one book for yourself and give the other four away to people like friends and family who really, I know that once they start reading it, they'll, they can't lay it down. It's like the late great planet Earth on steroids that Hal Lindsey wrote. And we really believe that lives will change. Okay, so you can find that at amazon.com. But, and uh, of course, but I want to talk to you about March 1st because March 1st is the 14 year anniversary 
of uh, this YouTube channel, but more than that, it's it started our internet, our online church, um, and all of and our television. We've been on television now almost nine years. All of this kind of branching, Rachel's heart, uh, with all the blankets that we've been out to people. Uh, that's been very ill, and the, and the prayer cloths to so many people, and the Bibles by the uh, by the thousands to so many people, uh, all of that given away, uh, and and all of that made possible by you, you the online church. We can't thank you enough. We we really can't thank you enough, and uh, so uh, as we make our way around the country. Uh, whether it's on the uh, Preacher Man van or we come to conferences or we, we're in different locations sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, we want you to know that thank God for you. And so help us celebrate. Help Heidi and I celebrate uh, 14 years. Uh, and for me, June the 24th, I'm celebrating 40 years. Heidi and I are celebrating 40 years in ministry. But these 14 guys... Uh, uh, very important. And so my grandson, who he is, uh, Drake, don't forget Drake. And Drake, um, he and I were in my office here in Indiana this afternoon doing some tremendous research and uh, setting up uh, a new channel. We'll let you know more about that probably in a week or so uh, where he's really uh, coming up with some, he's very gifted in uh, technology and understanding, and so we're excited about that. But uh, and and all of them that are involved. But this March the first, March the first is our 14th anniversary. We're going to lift a special offering as we do every year. I want you to pray about. It. I want you to think about. It. I want you to ask God if you can give your best offering uh, that once in a year. And just say thank you. And if if and if this ministry in any way, or this online church of all your wonderful friends out there that have been able to come together and build such a cohesive, gr a great group of people, let God help you give the the best offering that God would want you to. And we're taking that offering up March first. Matter of fact, we're opening up the, the window now. Some may want to start doing that, uh, but March first to be the day that we'll celebrate and we'll try our best to see what God is going to do and come together with the uh, the biggest offering that we can together to move forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We really want to keep reaching the world. And if there was ever a time that we need to be uh, focused on it, it is right now. It really, really is. So I'm going to get a song so I can drink a little water here, take a little break. Mike around the world is going to join us very shortly. And we've got so much going on right now. It's it's incredible, really. And um, so let's play a song. I'll be right back. Think about it. Reporters embedded from the Associated Press, embedded when they made their attack on Israel. Disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of a dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. Yeah. 
saw Kevin Wilson there in the chat room a minute ago. I'm going to play one of his songs uh, at the top of the hour or so uh, in the next five, ten minutes. Mike from the world is going to join us very shortly. And, of course, there's no, no doubt about this. Three massive solar flares in a 24-hour period. X-Class 1.8, X-Class 1.7, and we just had X-Class 6.8. <laughs> Three, I want to thank 
BP Earth Watch for sending me an email just before I came on here. And that just totally changed the title of the broadcast because, uh, I mean, we were going to talk about the two solar flares. I mean, I had it high on the list, but this this is a game changer. This is as big as this is the biggest one we've had in seven years. And there's three of them, three massive solar flares in 24 hour period with this last one just happening in the last hour and a half, two hours. And so, I mean, the earth hasn't even felt the pressure from that one yet. Uh, and that one's massive and mighty. The first two, I think, is what knocked the cell phone outages for AT&T, Verizon, Cricket Wireless, and T-Mobile. Now, when they first reported, they said, it's only AT&T, it's only AT&T, it'd be fine. It's only 55,000 people. Well, I was one of the 55,000, if that's the case. But then a little bit later in the day, they started saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, it's a lot more than that, oh, way over a million people. And, and really, I believe it was more than that. AT&T was not the only uh, cell phone um, company that was affected, but so was Verizon, so was Cricket Wireless, and so was T-Mobile, and maybe others, okay? And we also know that the ham radio uh Everything under uh, 30 megahertz was disrupted, especially in Hawaii and, Aust and Australia. So this thing is brutal. And now what you have to start worrying about, earthquakes. I mean, you really got to be worried about earthquakes now. Someone just said a 6.3 just hit in the Pacific Ocean. Thank you for that because I haven't had a chance to check back on that. So I think I'll do that. Mike around the world. Mike's going to have to help us. Remember what Mike said back on February 19th? He said in about 40 days or so, something big is going to happen. Okay. Well, we got to find that. We got, look, is this what he was talking about? Or is he talking about in the war? Or is he talking about disease X? Or is he talking about, you know, um, just, you know, the climate, the, the political climate in Washington. I mean, what was he talking about in 40 days? Something big is going to happen. All I know is this was an incredible, incredible solar flare. That's, that's the 6.3 right there. That is massive. Earth facing, we're going to feel that one. And we already got hit with the X-Class 1.8 and the X-Class 1.7. And I believe that's what caused all these outages. And I don't think we've seen the last of it. A lot of times you got to give it 72 hours or so before you get the full effects of CMEs in which you can have major earthquakes. Now, you know, BP Earth Watch is the guy who originally, and, and I've talked to more people since uh, BP came up with this concept that, he found out by studying and watching that there was a direct correlation between solar flares and earthquakes. And when you're in a solar maximum, which we're in right now, solar maximum 25, which isn't as bad as it's going to get, really in 2025, maybe even in 2026, will be the worst two years for this solar uh, cycle 25. And yet we're having incredible today off the charts, solar eruptions. That's why you don't want to miss this webinar we're having uh, March 22nd. Don't Get your tickets, because BP is one of the speakers, and he'll be all over this. This is called the Apocalyptic Signs. So when you're going to talk about apocalyptic signs in the heavens, you've got to talk about Jesse Waltman or BP Earth Watch. you you got to have Mark Biltz, Pastor Mark Biltz, who I guess has studied this out deeply and has some tremendous uh, information for us. Troy Anderson, my co-author of, of our book, Revelation 9-11, has been digging deep into this. And we talk about a lot of it uh, in our, our book. So be sure and get that. Mike Kerr and Jeannie Moore are also going to be speaking about this. And they're also holding their own conference on April the 5th, 
through April 8th in Dallas, Texas. If you want to come to that one in person, I'd love to see you. And on the last day of that conference, we're even going to go out and watch the solar eclipse. And it lasted Heidi, for four and a half minutes. It's twice as long as the last one, seven years ago. So this is apocalyptic, no doubt about that. Um, and uh, Rex Bear is going to be speaking in our webinar. Mike from around the world, of course, will be speaking in our webinar. Bart Begley is going to be doing a complete historical and prophetic events uh, documentary. I'm speaking in this as well. And this is going to be, and maybe more, this is going to be an incredible, again, get your tickets at Eventbrite, okay? And uh, go to Eventbrite, and uh, it's called Apocalyptic Signs, Apocalyptic Signs, okay? It's March 22nd. It's March 22nd. It will be an incredible, um, no doubt about that, incredible um uh, webinar. Okay. So I don't want you to miss it. But anyway, tonight we'll be talking to Mike about these things, but what did Mike say? What did he mean back on February 19th when he said in about 40 days or so, we're going to have a big event, a major event. What did he mean? Was he talking about the sol the solar flares, the sun erupting, was it, had, did it have something to do with the five waves of energy? Did it have something to do with the effects of planet X? It did it have something to do with the elections right now, the chaos, the carnage, the craziness, the, this absolutely insanity that we're witnessing uh, in this election cycle? Did it have something to do with the war in Russia and Ukraine? Or maybe the war broadening in Europe? Or did it have something to do with the nations coming against Israel, the Iranians, the Russians, the Houthi rebels in Yemen, the Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, the Syrians, uh, the Iranians? I mean, are you serious? What is it that he's expecting, he's anticipating, that is going to happen uh, by around, around March 29th, around 40 days, he told us on February 19th. And what about the Iranians selling hundreds of missiles to Russia? And Ukraine is saying they're running out of ammo, they're running out of artillery, they're running out of tanks, uh, and they're losing cities now. Uh, and they're losing villages and towns. And the Russians are taking hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers prisoner. And uh, the wheels are starting to come off. And I was actually watching um, President Vladimir Zelensky. He was doing an interview. Heidi, who was he interviewing with? Was that? I don't remember. I can't remember. But they were sitting in a bombed out uh, shelter. And... I, you know, you can read body English and expressions and people's countenance. And what I seen was a man that knew that it was over. Uh, so what do you do? You got to get out of this thing somehow. Uh, does he, does he go ahead and let Moscow know that he wants to surrender and uh, Russia can keep Crimea and uh, all the land that they've taken here in eastern Ukraine? <coughs> or does Russia say, well, we, we want it all. You know, we want a whole lot more than that. And, uh, you know, you got to wonder if those discussions aren't already going on. And I think I have to ask Mike, because I remember Mike in 2014 when Russia first really started making a move at Crimea, and we're really supporting the, what they called the Russian rebels in Eastern Ukraine. And I said, Mike, is, is, does he just want Crimea back and, and, and the Eastern Ukraine? Mike said, no, he'll never leave Ukraine. He will stay until he takes it all. And that was 10 years ago, folks. That was 2014. I remember because Heidi and I were in Jamaica preaching a revival 
there in Jamaica when this happened. And, uh, and I remember Mike saying, they'll never leave. And 10 years later, they haven't left. And, and despite that, even the Russian populace has been very angry with Vladimir Putin. So much so that, uh, you know, uh, Alexei uh, Naval, uh, Naval, Navalny, Navalty, whatever, I can't remember his name, I can't pronounce it. Um, you know, he became a champion among the people and he raised up and uh, Putin poisoned him and then threw him in prison and now he's dead. And now they won't give his body back to his wife or his mother. And Heidi, you kept saying to me, she needs to address Vladimir Putin personally. Mm -hmm. And she did. Did she? She did. And I watched the video of it this morning in which she demanded that he give her son's body back. Mm -hmm. That this was inhumane. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, there was still <clears throat> no word out of the Kremlin, not yet. And I think it's because I think Putin's trying to distance himself. Uh, when he took when he took Navani and put him in Siberian prison, as far north up there in Russia that you could put somebody away from his family and where any no one could, you know difficult to get to him. And he put he tucked him away for three years. I think he was trying to put distance between him and to put down the revolution uh, faction that was rise, raising up in the streets. Um, but now, with his death, it's rekindled again. But at the same time, the timing is, while he's taking, taking more ground and winning more in Ukraine. So he's trying to now put distance between his death and surrendering of his body. I mean, there's a lot of calculation going on here. Don't ever forget that Vladimir Putin is ex-KGB. Maybe he's always, I think he's sort of like this, once sort of like some of the CIA agents I've talked to, once CIA, always CIA, once MI6, always MI6, once Mossad, always Mossad. Well, I would say once KGB, always KGB. And so there's some sadness. There's some really bad sadness of, of what's happening there. Um, it really, really is. I'm gonna play another song. Mike's gonna join us in very, probably right after the song. And so I'd like to do this, as I promised, play a Kevin Wilson song for you from his brand new album, Soul Seekers. And uh, mm, mm, mm. what a great, what a really a great album this is. Here's a song that he wrote about his mother, Kentucky.
Kevin Wilson writing a song there, singing a song really about his mother who recently passed away not a few months ago. But, um, um, you know, and, and I, I got to spend some time. I've been the last couple of days here with my mom and dad, and, and um, they're doing good, you know. Dad's going to be 88 here very soon, and uh, they're doing pretty good, aren't they, Heidi? Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah. Uh, the blanket, my apologies. I don't have it with me at this moment. Uh, it's incredible. It was sent to me by CO, the family, the COT family. So tomorrow I will be doing a special video and look for the video. It'll be called The Blanket, okay? It is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, I, I just can't even express to you. So many people participated in it, Heidi. It was amazing. It, it's amazing. It really is. And I apologize because I said I was going to show it to you tonight, but I don't have access to it tonight but i will tomorrow and i will show you tomorrow okay so we'll be looking for that video tomorrow called the blanket okay i really want to thank everybody for taking the time and the effort to to make such a beautiful beautiful uh piece of art in a way from your heart it was a piece of art from your heart the blanket is absolutely spectacular Speaking of COT, Mike around the world is going to join us here any minute. And uh, wow, you know, you know, I know everybody always says, what about the stone steps and what about the coffin? Well, I think we've explained that many times, and I think you're already watching the stone steps. If you don't believe it, $355 million judgment against the former president. The only thing they didn't do to him was handcuff him and walk him down the steps. And Stay tuned, that might happen. But what we've seen this week um, is a, a lot of things that we've talked about for years, but certainly I think that um, what's happened here with the sun, explosions on the sun, but Mike said to us last February, just last week, February 19th, um, that... Um, in 40 days, there's going to be something big. And he said that kind of at the end of a broadcast, Heidi. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, you know, I said, what? What are you talking about, something big? Well, I don't know what he meant exactly, but we're going to ask him tonight if he's uh, able to reveal that. Or if he can, he can't. He may, if we have to wait 40 days before he can, and then we'll know, then okay. But I'm wondering, you know, with the sun exploding, and the wars, and the rumors of wars, and the crime, and the southern border, and the uh, the Bible says that in the last days things will get will wax worse and worse. It says because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. We're watching that now. Uh, people are rude. People are not considerate. The world will eat you alive. It's dog eat dog. And even I see it sometimes among people who say they're in the church. Unfortunately, we're watching this, um, this, ah, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, no love, okay? This selfish mentality. And it's, it's, it's uh, and the persecution that's going on right now among Christians and Jews, and uh, the hatred for children, the exploitation, the trafficking that goes on, and the fear-mongering that goes on constantly by the media. They are the worst. I mean, really, they, they, have, they are beyond disappointing. They are agents of disruption. And uh, I'm telling you, it's bad. But the man... With the plan, uh, join us, folks, from somewhere located somewhere around the globe. It's Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? God bless your basketball. Doing okay. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got to have a voice here. Hang on. Say that again. Is it okay now? Oh, it sounds great. Okay, doing okay. Doing okay. Mike, I'm glad to hear that. You sound better than last week. You were, you. Yeah, I feel better. Yeah, your voice yeah, is, was, uh... your voice. 
Much better. Well, Mike, we've been talking here about these solar flares. You know, these, there's three of them in the last 24 hours. One in the last couple hours, which was Mammoth. It was, uh, you know, we, so we had an X-Class 1.8, and then we had an X-Class 1.7, and those might have been what caused all these power outages, I mean, uh, cell phone outages. Um, and then about two hours ago, we just had a massive X-Class 6.3, and this is the largest one in seven years. So you have all three of those in a 24 hour period. I guess my first question is, is this the beginning of a hostile sun due to the binary system uh, that's coming into our solar system? Well, that's a good question, uh, Pastor Paul. So let me explain this, let me explain this. About, uh, I think it was uh, January, uh, I'll put some dates up in January. Yeah, those, yes, uh, you did. Of course, that was on the website. One of the dates was February 20th. And uh, that was, that's been up there a while. The other one is February uh, 28th. So those have been up there for a while. But in order for someone to get close to any solar event yet again like that, well, they must know something about right. some perturber somewhere, right? So right. I'm, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that some sort of credibility with consistency with these dates will we'll put a bit of a foundation for something more that must come forward because although we have lots of problems in this world, our entire solar system will be under siege soon. And uh, it's not really something anybody should take lightly but should be highly aware of. Um, which is why I suggested that webinar with, uh, you know, BP and all those individuals who know about uh, Nibiru, some people call it, or binary system is what I know it by, and uh, solar events and, and the like, because we're going to have to deal with that more and more this year, and it will be devastating at times. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, that some sort of credibility can be established in that in that area because it's very difficult to believe Pastor Paul, when you're talking about something the world does not cover uh, right you're talking about a subject that most people don't understand for example you have amateur astronomers and those who work with jpl and all these different guys whenever they begin to figure their calculations dealing with uh, celestial mechanics and and uh, gravitational pool and this that and the other there is still a lopsided inertial tug on our solar system coming from one side. And the only way to explain that is a large gravitational pull coming from out there in space. The only thing that would ever have that power to sustain it of that long, we're talking about since the time of Voyager. The only wow. thing that would have that type of mass to do that uh, would be a binary twin. But not one, you know, it's not textbook, no. But it would have the mass to offset some of you know, some of the formulas they have to adjust for. Even, even uh, you know, this, this small flight that went to the moon, may, that, that was an autonomous vehicle. And autonomy is very important because it can make adjustments on the fly. Which is, is it? Are very you important? So, are you saying that this moon landing that just happened this evening is something to do with Nibiru? Uh, uh, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that the forces that are acting on our solar system are so strong that they have to make uh, they have to have craft with autonomy where they can make their own decisions. I see. And when they're flying in space, so they can make adjustments, right? Yep. Or they wouldn't make it. They just wouldn't make it. Uh, so as this force becomes stronger and stronger, it definitely will mess with a heliosphere, is what it's doing right now. And of course, any weak spot in the heliosphere will demand a response from the sun. It's a very intricate system. Think of it as a cell wall, right? If your cell wall and any of your cells are penetrated, your body is going to react. The sun and the heliosphere are the exact same way. Right. Even as far as ratios, uh, the creator made the ratios of this solar system that we're in, just like the human cell. It's amazing. It's quite amazing. But um, the sun is, is becoming active 
in very predictable ways. Let's but talk about that. So just, let me let me. Okay, so let's let's uh, back up for um, just a moment for some of the audience who may be the first time they're here or don't know what Mike is saying. Mike has given us dates going back, I believe, in uh, November or certainly in December, December, January into February. He's given us several uh, specific dates of events that were going to happen with the sun or affecting the sun. And we've seen those dates come to pass one after another. And uh, now this massive, this insane three solar flares in a 24 hour period, you basically, you predicted this again. Um, and you're saying is we have to build some credibility of what you're talking about by setting dates and then showing people when things are happening so that when you explain why it happens, people won't just say, oh no, I don't hear these crazy idiots. When, because you're not gonna hear this right. from the mainstream media. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, right, they're not gonna cover that. They can't cover that. Because if anybody ever knew that uh, if it were true in the, in the mind of the populace, nothing, no civility would be maintained uh, to this point. Everybody would take their own future in their own hands. And they, you know, it would become uh, a virtual, you know, it would be real chaos in the world. So nobody could, should ever look forward to that. People will have the effects on the tops of their heads before they admit anything. They're wow. just not going to do it. And don't you find it strange that um, we have those flares, of course, right? Now, the, the actual cell phone event, the, the cell phone phone yeah. with the networks is strange. Let me explain one thing. For example, AT&T, starting at 3.30 a.m., which was uh, one of the first network flip bit problems, um, you had a series of phones go down. Now, here's what that means. You could be in your house, your phone could go down, Heidi's could stay up, right? Or your son's could go down and somebody else's could stay up. Uh, this was happening all over the place, which suggests that it was some sort of batch outage. Now, what I mean by that is when cellular, uh, phone, all cell phones have an ID, right? So they have a unique signature, so to speak. And it was certain batches of phones within those ID lots that were going down. This was with AT&T for the most part. Now they handle government emergency communications also, AT&T does. Okay. Which means soldiers out in the field utilize some of that network. And there was a knowing, there was a knowing. But um, when that network went down, some of the individuals from, for example, T-Mobile, Verizon, all these guys, they, their servers were routing the calls, but nobody could reach any AT&T network. And wow. some of their calls began to, you know, was jammed up. So I would say that was more, you know, I'm not definitively saying this because I can't, even if I knew what it was, I still can't say it, but I would say this was more of an internal issue they had to handle, which could have come from an external source. So it could have been a hack of, by one of the major players, uh, nations here in the world. Right. now, we're, And hacking is not like it used to be. You know, it's, it's not always somebody external uh, from the U.S. trying to get to the U.S. We have real problems here in the U.S. now where people right. that are part of corporations and companies hate the USA. In their minds, the USA is gone, and they will take these irrational actions uh, to do certain things. So they quickly had to swap everybody over to a different uh, network so they can work the other system. They will find the absolute cause. They will find the signatures. Uh, they've isolated the drives and the equipment that, you know, that was affected by this. But it, it's just... It's odd. It would all happen at the same time, almost like somebody was taking advantage of yeah. any type of event to strike. Yeah, and and, and here's the thing I, th I thought of earlier today is I, and I think I told Heidi this. I said, it's as if there's some probing going on. They they, they could have really taken down the the cell phone systems, the GPS systems, everything. But it was like they were just probing to see 
what they could do when they want to do it. And, and they took advantage of the solar flares that were erupting on the sun as a good time to test it. Is that, I mean, we've seen probing going on with the Iranians and Hezbollah. And, yeah, they probe. You know, the yeah. Russians do a lot of probing as yeah. well in China. And we do a lot of probing in the United States. So do you, is that what my, we might have been seeing, a little probing going on internally or even externally? We could have. We could have. The most, the, the, one of the most disturbing things about it is not the communications. Uh, it is the way that people reacted. It is what is the information they gained, yeah. right, from the reaction from the news. Because I intentionally looked at every single news organization to see what they were going to say. Now, these guys had genuine questions and all of them said the same thing they said well could it be from the solar flame right which means they did not know right, right? they didn't know at t could not give a response quick enough the white house got involved they wanted to know what happened uh, okay so our enemies were also watching the same news channels that everybody else yeah. watches, right yeah so they too were gauging this what's so dangerous about this fastball is that communications causing that type of reaction lets anybody out there understand and know that we, we we have gotten a little too arrogant concerning technology a little too comfortable right yep we have a power grid and each each network in a power grid is isolated nobody can really hack into it unless they arrive their own station if that were to happen with a power company it would send everything everything would be upside down plus if they were able to do that with a uh, power plant, so to speak, it'd only be about a couple of hours before we had a meltdown. Now, unlike other times that we've been in, because most of these nuclear uh, facilities haven't altered, if they did have a meltdown, which could take place in about a couple of hours, and it would be irreversible, you're talking about a radius of about 100 miles to, I say, 1 to 1,000 miles of an actual kill radius, right? Wow. You're also looking at more than that, the radius of of, uh, sickness and things like that, right? We have some very vulnerable issues within the U.S. And we have this at a time where the populace is not quite loyal to the U.S. In other words, we have people in this house called the United States of America who hate the house. Yes. Right. Yes. And things are becoming unhinged. And this should, whether the Lord allowed this to happen, whether somebody did this and it was some nefarious activity, whether somebody hacked it and it was a foolish act or some equipment broke down, it demonstrates our lack of resolve when needed. It really does. Civilian and government coordination is not high enough to overcome this problem quickly and efficiently enough. Right. They should have restored communications within a couple of minutes. There should have been a redundant backup to handle communications easily. Right. So only a few people should have noticed that outage. That wasn't the case. It began at 3.30 a.m. Even AT&T did not recognize the outage until a specific website which people report to saying that there are services out. Wow. They took a look at it. They verified. So we have a problem. We yeah. have a big that's a problem. Well, That's a, a lot problem. of, Mike, a lot of the 911 uh, emergency systems didn't work. And then this is a huge problem. Now that everybody's got off the landline and have went to cell phones, this is a, and, but when the 911 uh, in major cities wasn't working, this is catastrophic. Yeah, there are 4G um, uh, uh, delayed networks there or, or secure networks there. And so, when the AT&T's routing system went down, right, when they actually route calls, that was it. Because every single call has to be routed somewhere. A computer a set of servers handles that. The, but again, the big problem was you had you had uh, certain government facilities that had problems, Pastor Paul, right? Yep. That's, that's a no-go. Certain military installations were affected by the AT&T outage. Wow. Of all the companies... AT&T was the big one. That is the wrong company to be able to, you know, get to, right? That can, you, that can, that's, communications company could do us in. Yeah, so that's AT&T. where we we kind of feel that the probing uh, from some uh, actor, a uh, nefarious actor, whether it's somebody right here, several people in here, it wouldn't be just one 
guy hacking on a computer. I mean, this is an, a highly orchestrated event, whether it's from exterior nation or someone or the, a group inside. This was no, uh, you know, lucky hacker. Right. I, I, and sadly enough, if this was an attempt to, to, to prove, to see what the reaction of the U.S. was, I believe they got too much information today, right? Which I, it also means they could easily uh, diverge our attention to small things like that while they do something else. Wow. We, we have vulnerabilities. Yes, we do. We do. yes. And we're, unfortunately, uh, people are not coming together to handle that, right? Well, let's talk about you know, let's talk about some of the things that's happening right now. We can look at the Middle East and we can look in Russia. the The fact that the uh, United States, thank God, the President of the United States, held on to his veto power and did not let a vote come up to divide the land of Israel in a two state solution. Uh, but boy, we're hanging on by a thread here. And now Benny Gantz has made the statement that. Uh, if you want this, uh, if you don't want to have us attacking Rafa during Ramadan, you better right now turn over all the hostages or we're coming. Uh, I, I think that that is a serious, that could blow things sky high in the Middle East. What's your thoughts? Well, it's the, the tensions in the Middle East um, in the last 28 hours has increased. It's quite, the atmosphere is quite thick. Right? Yeah. A lot of uncertainty. And the situation, uh, again, it's a bit worse than what anybody would report. Right. There, there's a, a legitimate worry with commanders and folks like that who are over there that uh, yeah. there's a, a massive underestimation of things. But I personally believe that uh, Joel chapter three. Yep. We're about to see Joel chapter three. Yep. And because they're going to, in my opinion, this is my opinion, they, they're going to part that land. Yep. They're going to part, they're going to force it. I agree. They're talking more and more that they want to disarm Israel. They, they're they're yeah. calling Israel a Middle Eastern terrorist organization. <laughs> is what they're That's calling crazy. It. That's crazy. But just and what Iran you're saying. Has, Iran has overwhelming support. Right? I know. Not only that, Pastor Paul. But you have NATO. They're ready to act outside of the USA. That's not looking for okay. Well, now, is that because we don't have the leadership that we used to have? I mean, when NATO starts saying, "Look, we can't wait around for Joe Biden or the Americans. We're going to have to take the ball and run with it ourselves." Is this? I mean, this is a this is a shift of the global order, isn't it? Yeah. That, yeah. It's you know what if you look. It's been slowly but surely. It's kind of like Saudi Arabia, right, and Iran. Iran doubled their income with Saudi Arabia, who double dealt with Jordan and the USA and Israel, right, and Russia. Yeah. So they've been triple dipping, but they've made so much money, Pastor Paul, right? Uh, Saudi Arabia is spending the equivalent of about $4 billion every three days on projects. <laughs> Okay, that's a lot of money. Okay, so but but it's not hurting them because they're also feeding Iran. See, they have back channel alliances that they deal with. So these guys are they're they're talking one way. Believe me, they're working on something else. Right, and their attitude is turning hostile uh, towards Western culture, Western things, which is just like prophecy. But we're going to see an escalation in that. And China, by the way, China is becoming highly aggressive uh, in what they're doing. And so, you know, we're going to have to make a move at some point. For example, CERN, that facility CERN is not, is no longer, you know, it was one of the biggest machines on the earth, right? Right. Not anymore. China has that beat. China unveiled something to a degree, not, not to the whole world, but they unveiled something. They have a facility that is twice as big as CERN. Right, it sits about 1.3 miles underneath the Earth. It is, Pastor. It's huge. What and these guys, for some, for somehow they have, they have copied, uh, crafted the equipment they need to harness a lot of dark matter. A what? Lot of dark. I mean, a lot of. I'm not talking about a little bit. 
identified over the course of years you know, a lot of dark matter. They have actually successfully blanked out some of the neutrino noise that's necessary to hear or, or to actually observe dark matter by way of calculations to extract. And, and they're going to do it. They're working on that right now. And these guys started this project not too long ago, right? So they're doing it. They're also digging a hole right to the core of the earth. All these correlate. So China does not have time to wait on everybody else. And their aggression factor is scaring the admirals of our Navy. So are you saying a one and one mile and a third in the into the earth, they have built a machine bigger than the CERN and Dave and yes. over in, and yes. is it another CERN? Another it's a it's another collider, right? It's a much bigger device. It does it it um, you know they don't have the regulations that everybody else right, does. So right. they have just up the ante. What about this thing. boring a, a hole in the heart of the earth? I mean, what's the purpose? Same thing Russia did. Okay. You remember Russia? Russia was boring that hole. Yeah, I do um, remember that. Yes. Well, they had to close that hole faster. They had to. They had to. Okay. Not only did they reach an impenetrable barrier where diamond bits, diamond titanium bits, could not penetrate. I mean, it could not. Uh, but other things were taking place. Spiritual. Run into that same problem. Okay. In the March, right? S but they have a plan to go past it. Because they've been doing a lot of exploratory um, research concerning the depths of the earth. And um, these guys are not going to stop at that impenetrable barrier. They, they have looked beyond that already, right? It's an, you know, China's doing so much. That's why we had to get that craft on the moon. And we had to get that craft on the moon in a spot where China has already claimed. They already claimed that spot. You know that, right? <laughs> so expect some sort of moon war coming out of this. Well, I did. I do expect that because I know China is trying to claim the moon almost uh, for their own. And, and, and oh, by the way, Iran's claiming the Arctic uh, all of a sudden. So um, there's a lot of well, uh, territory it, snatching. It's, it's not hype. China's been to the moon four times, successfully landing a craft, four craft up there that are working in tandem to do things on the moon right now. Uh, this is our first successful landing. Because of one a couple of weeks ago, it failed. Uh, we, had, we had two more before that, they failed. And so essentially the US is contracting civilian companies to build them, you know, the equipment. Uh, and they, they kind of guide it up there, so to speak, with a co-op, because they want to get up there pretty quick. So they're going to the moon again, but we may have, you know, if, if they can, I don't know. That depends on what happens on Earth. We are in a pickle. We are. And it's destabilizing quickly. So let me ask you a question. As as the, as the war rages on in, in Russia and Ukraine, and like you said, with Israel, there's so much on the table there. Um, the, we, uh, the, the question is now, Russia took over the, that one city, the big city. They're taking over villages and towns. I'm understanding that they have captured hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers as made them POWs. Uh, is, and Zelensky looks like he's running out of gas and, and the wheels are starting to come off. Do you think Putin will continue to force to take the whole country? Uh, or do you think Europe is going to cut their losses, NATO countries? Uh, or what do you see happening here? Well, Europe was waiting on the U.S. to see what our Congress would do, right? Yeah. We are effectively stalled. Yeah. We're stalled. And there's certain, you know, elements to know that we're stalled. The Ukraine has been losing, unfortunately. I know a lot of people, they don't see it that way, right? but they've been losing. Yeah. And uh, although a lot of people have been evacuated, many people do go to the Ukraine to fight for that cause. Putin is not going to give up. He's not going to stop. He's not going to back down. He's going to continue to go forward with that until he restores um, what he believes is Mother Russia and all of its, all of its territories. The, he's willing to do what's necessary to make that happen. Well, Mike, that, that would include the Baltic states? All of its territories. Poland, Romania? Yep, all of its territories. So it's so NATO knows this. NATO knows oh, yeah. that, 
and Putin yes, is, is, is not flinching. And when Tucker Carlson interviewed him the other day, he didn't look like a man that was on his last leg. He didn't sound like a guy who didn't know what was going on. Um, the, once KGB, always KGB, the way I see it, uh, he's, on a, he's on a mission, right? Yeah, the media lies, Pascal. They, they, they buy propaganda. They painted a picture as though Putin was this, you know, had become frail and senile. And by the way, he died like four times, according to media yeah. stories. Yeah. Um, so they just, you know, they continue to lie with that propaganda. With these, but they don't, I guess they don't understand that hurts the situation because that fuels Russia to do much more. Anyway, he's, he's very vibrant. He's very in control yeah. of his faculties, and he's going to continue to push down that door uh, to the Ukraine and more. And his warnings are real, and he is prepared to use uh, greater weapons. Now, when NATO makes their decision, Pastor Paul, and we have committed troops to certain ground activities um, in or near the Ukraine, he will use higher yield weapons. He will. Wow. And everybody is getting, they know that. Everybody knows this. They're getting positioned for that. Now, just so everybody has some clarity, what that means is over there in that region, it will begin to explode everywhere. People here in the USA, they will see Israel in great duress. They're going to see Israel in duress. They're going to see the Middle East in duress. And we may see that for, you know, uh, uh, based on that war for some time without it actually being able to penetrate us. But at some point, we'll be drawn in too. So but let's talk you know, about... There's time for that. Yeah, let's talk about Israel. You made the point that you believe this is Joel 3, and I do too. Um, I, I Honestly, this is the Joel 3 prophecy. The whole world's being brought down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and God is pleading with the world, don't do this. You don't want to do this. But they're going to do it. I think Jesus gave us that clue in Matthew 24 when he said, when you see this, you better flee. You, Jews are living in Judea. You better get out of there. Don't even get stuff out of your house. So it's coming. I mean, we're, do you see that event? Do you see oh, yeah. this thing coming to yeah. a head in the next uh, 12 months? Pastor Bowen, like if, if that could explode, right, at, at, a, at, at this year. It can really yeah. happen this year. And, you know, speaking of that scripture you brought up, it's the only time Jesus ever told anybody to run. Yeah. Right? You're right. It's the only time. And if, and if Christ tells somebody to run, well, they might want to think twice about that. And, and of course, in Joel, one of the more notable passages, at the end it says, they have scattered among them, uh, they have, um, yep. let me read the whole thing. It says, um, I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Yep. And parted, parted my, my land. land. That's past tense. That's past tense. So that means they did it. Yes. Yeah. They parted the land. So that means if, for that prophecy to come to pass, they're going to go ahead and make their decisions. They're going to force Israel to do what, what they're talking about right now. And, uh, yeah, I think the last. Be I think that what's happening now that uh, it's coming down to the United States. We're, we're the last veto, and then once they do vote on the floor of the General Assembly of the United Nations, which could be this September, let's say, um, they're going to force it. The only way you can disarm Israel is you have to cut off the funding, and that's the United States. So. If the United States cuts off the funding or the uh, the artillery or the you know the, the technology, they basically can disarm Israel. Am I correct? And here's the bad news. Here's the bad news. You ready? Yep. They have already cut the funding to the Ukraine. Without, yep. Without, without, uh, the president didn't make that. This is all in the hands of Congress. Right. right? Somebody inside the, the the White House. Somebody inside Congress, Pascal, is not working in the best interest of the USA. They're working, they're doing everything NATO dictates. More specifically, they're doing everything France dictates. <laughs> Are you serious? All you, have to do, all you have to do is everything France declares. Are you serious? Because right? that, they're I mean. standing against or for things. See, this, I, you know, I don't get into politics. But right, 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 right. People in Washington. They have three faces. The people see one face, and it's the face that they want people to see. 
than they. There's a much darker face. And all you have to do is, is really watch foreign moves and you'll see them matched only by a small group of people, sometimes, most often, word for word, as though they're handed a script and they will not move from it. They attempt to portray this in the favor of the people, right? That's not gonna work out so well. And when people finally find out, it's gonna to be too late. They're blind, I, I think that many people can't see it right now because we have too many internal distractions, right? Yeah. President Trump and this, um, you know, the prosecution of him and his family and his corporation businesses. And so how do you on. feel about that, Mike? How it's do you a feel? Huge about, distraction how, for a lot. Of well, people. how do you feel about that personally? I mean, well, with the way what? he's being treated. Oh boy, I, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. People are always going to have in politics. They're going to have their feuding and their fights, right? Yeah. But my biggest problem is the people. Okay, here's why I say that. When you people claim they care about the candidate they vote for, yeah. right? They do. If they truly cared, he wouldn't be in this mess. And what I mean by that, if he had, if, if President Trump has 70 million supporters, how come they can't give him two bucks a piece? Five bucks a piece. Right. Right? Why can't they do that twice in a week? Problem solved. Here's the issue, though. For some reason, People will say they care. They support, follow, and everything else. But I believe that money has power over too many people. True. They cannot part from it. They will not back up, you know, what they truly feel with, with that dollar. It, it overpowers them for some reason. Yeah. Right? You're true. My only advice for that is if a dollar bill can change, if having money can change my attitude, then money is stronger. Than the living God in my life. That's Nothing not can good. have power to change no. my attitude. If God is at the top, he's on his throne in my life, then nothing can change my attitude but him. Amen. Right? Everything else is subsidiary to him. Amen. But far too many people give money too much power. And it's time that be reversed, right? That's why Amen. people withhold things. I can almost feel it in me. The people, they, I don't know what it is, Pastor Paul. They, they are. Well, is some of it to, fear? They allow it. It's, it's a lack of faith. That's first of all. Yeah, well, it's big it's time. something is getting them. And and there it's and it's also it's, the faith is being replaced with the fear, fear of what yeah. might happen to them. I mean, let me say this politically, and I don't want to get into that, but the the polls, the uh, favorability of Trump in New York went sky high up from where he was at. So much so that they start to wonder. The Democrat Party starting to wonder. Could he flip New York? Uh, that's how much the people of New York felt he was being railroaded in this whole thing. Um, so this means the country right now is really in this uh, vice. They're in a vice, and they're not sure which way they should go They're because they're afraid. Um, at some point, they got to make the decision. And I think if people would just listen to the Lord, they would know exactly what to do, but sure they people would. just won't. Um, so you see this escalating even worse than the chaos? Yeah. They're not going to stop until um, they, they accomplish what they want to accomplish. They're not. And let's, you know, to be fair, there were some unreported uh, casualties involved, right? And it really hit close to home. People are wild. They really are. For example, somebody could say something that is benign in nature and somebody else can hear it and take it to the extreme and act on it. And that's what we face here. Not everybody is sane enough, right, to hear right. certain things. And in this case, people did die. They did not report it, but people did die. Uh, you're talking about congressional members who had folks who died, and they are unforgiving in that area. So they're going to go after everything they can go after, right? Which is, by the way, it's not going to, this thing that people do when they say, you know, we need justice. Right. I hate to tell them the justice that man has is not going to bring anybody back. It's not going to solve their issues. It's not. It never does. Um, the Florida issue, right? All that justice did absolutely nothing. It yep. didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. And, and because... There is no justice that man can give that can suffice somebody 
you know, being taken away. They, they have to really look into truth itself. And I'll say it again, for some reason, there's a, there's a thickness spreading all over the earth that's blinding quite a few people. Well, you We're think it's, a, to get to them. it's sort of like the strong delusion that the Bible talks about in Thessalonians. Uh, is it the beast kingdom, the new world order? I mean, the you know, the yep. one world government. You yeah, can, absolutely. It's, absolutely. I mean, what do you see? How do you see it developing, Mike? The, Hold on. Pass ball, look, look that. Well, <laughs> let, let's break it. Let's break it because people know about the mark, right? Right. They know. People know about cryptocurrency. Yes. Right? Yes. Those who are in the cryptocurrency probably need to look into who just bought up billions of dollars. Well, they're buying up billions of dollars every single day and in Bitcoin, right? They yeah. need to look into folks like BlackRock and all these different individuals and these large corporations that are now buying up Bitcoin. Hopefully, they can equate that they're not doing this just for the fun of it. No, they're not no, doing that. No, no. Uh, a long time ago, we discussed they're going to utilize that system, right, the Bitcoin system, because foreigners are involved in that. It has become one of the main currencies of a couple of nations, and they're going to make that permanent here, which means, Passball, here it is. You ready? I'm not making a financial prediction. I'm just relaying something. Okay. They expect Bitcoin, right, to go up to two, uh, I think the, the, the uh, term was 200 Two hundred and ten thousand dollars per coin. Wow! I mean, it's right now. It's okay. like fifty-two thousand. This is what they expect. Okay. Okay. So, it's, so a lot of people, because it's about to be a very rare coin, right? Right. I'm sure that people are going to go back who are involved in Bitcoin and look at this. And when you find out what I'm saying is true, uh, don't make any financial decisions based on this. I'm just telling you some things that I know from the inside. And so you have a lot of big players uh, jumping in, right? And they will effectively, because they can't control Bitcoin right now, right? No. And if you can't control Bitcoin, and anybody can get rich, you cannot govern who has power and who does not. However, if you start buying up a bunch of wallets, you get in there and you have the largest, um, you know, you, you own the largest shares. And you start buying it up to the point where mining becomes redundant because you're going to have the coins. Right, where they become a rare coin, you and if you own that larger wallet, you can effectively manipulate anything you want to legally because every financial decision you make is going to affect everybody else. Yeah, and all the other coins are tied to Bitcoin. This is what's happening because they're getting ready for the mark. They're getting ready to consolidate so, everything. So the dollar, so the dollar's got to die, doesn't it? And and is well, is well, bit. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's going to it's lose its power. The the world won't be operating off a petrol dollar. It's going to shift. Maybe Bitcoin is the bridge to this new currency, or maybe Bitcoin is this new currency. I don't know, but it's leading us to the mark of the beast. Oh yeah, it's definitely doing that because they're going to take everybody who has any type of uh, if they have you know money other than uh, you know some of your precious metals but if they have money and they're used to living their life they're going to continue to do that for as long as possible right. so what they'll do is they'll get people used to a different way of exchanging their money this was a program that uh i think i discussed this in 2001 i believe because i saw a sop kind of like a notebook right and it began with bank cards it began with the banks uh, the banks had you know, certain SOPs they had to follow, uh, a certain narrative they had to follow. This was followed up by, right, because we had the Patriot Act back then, all that good stuff. The banks had everybody used to not carrying cash. Right now, the average person does not carry cash. They don't right. use cash like they used to. And so they got everybody used to digital um, transactions. So the phones, because they're so fun to play with and you can track things instantly, most people trust the software now. They can see their amount of money and they're good with that. Well, about 15 years ago, that wasn't so. People were not comfortable with, with seeing a dollar figure on a phone right, with the money in Right, no. Uh, but now they are. They're totally confident. And so people have a vested interest in digital currency. They just don't know it yet. And when they take away... The, the the availability of cash, right? It will effectively change. It's going to be a it's I'm, going to be a 
first a, a shift, shift, right? Yeah, something that people are going to want because we're going to have a hacking problem. It's going to scare all of us to pieces. Yeah, and that's going to make it easier to shift the pub public into a Absolutely, cashless society. They're not going to lose their money. Right. They're tied to that money passport. And somebody, imagine somebody, um, uh, some bank is compromised, and people start losing money. Right. Yeah. And they have real trouble from that loss, where they're going to demand that somebody have better security. So they pay the money back, right? And then they apply the patches, do whatever they have to do, and they roll out the new security. System. Yep. And right. everybody, and once that security system is in play, and people are told, "Hey, you never have to worry about hacking ever again." Uh, they're going to love it, and because they don't have to take the mark initially, they're going to get it, get used to it. Once they're used to it, they're going to say, "Hey, in order for you to keep this, yep, you got to get this mark." Yeah, and I people, and I and uh, that's people are going to gladly do that. Yeah, no, this is what I and you. What you just did, the scenario is exactly what we've been looking at. Is they will bring out this new currency this new system, people will, everybody will jump in because it, it'll be the system. But then there will be the day when you, for you to keep it, you have to deny Jesus Christ. There, nobody gets tricked into the mark of the beast. Never. I mean, people go in full-throated, wide-eyed, no doubt about it, have to make a decision. And, um, there will be people who will make the right decision, but there will be millions, I mean a gazillion, people who will not do the right thing because they have no more faith. They don't believe there's a God. Part, don't you think, Mike, part of the, part of the deal is there, that we're being inundated with a godless society, uh, a, a society of that course. is demonically of charged. Of course, and I, you know what, Pastor, I've never seen anything like it. You have folks out there that are, they claim the love of the Lord, right? Right. But they will not take a step in that direction of faith. They need some sort of compensation to feel like they're getting something in return, but they want no part of it. And then you have more and more people coming out saying, well, I just I, I just never believed in the first place. I can't do this. Then you have folks like, uh, well, high representatives who claim that they're Christian, but then on secret recordings, they're cursing out everybody. Right. That's not working out either. No. So they don't, their real faith is is uh, more of a, you know, some sort of a, uh, to, to appease their conscience for the moment. But again, you have a lot of people, the dividing line for the mark and everything else is going to be the dollar passed ball again. If people do not learn how to give things away, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And I really think that's key. A lot of people, they if I pass ball, if I were to give you something, and you get it, and three weeks later I check on you and say, "Well, how's it doing? Is it okay? You, you know, you're treating it well. That's not giving you anything. That's a loan. No, that's something. that's and kind of, of buying some way. Right? <laughs> they loan them. Yeah. When you give something away, when you give somebody something, if I were to give somebody something, I want them. Because it's theirs, it's no longer mine. I'm not right. going to check on it, do anything else. I want that to work for them. And I think that even even with the Lord's children, they have to learn how to really to really give. Because yeah. when you really give, there's no jealousy, no envy, no, you don't have that thought, did I make a mistake? Should nope. I? Shouldn't I? Because no. you're giving to God. Because you're Holy giving to God. Gift, right? Yeah, when you give to God. that with everything they do, pass ball, yeah. with their love, right? With their love, with their servitude, uh, feeding their families, with their children their spouse, every, it should be with everything. It should be yeah. a practice that should be in us. And I guarantee you, if anybody ever does that, their spirit is going to, all these missing gaps that people have in their lives, that place they can't reach spiritually, is going to be filled as soon as they do that. But for a yeah. lot of people, that's holding them back. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. And and uh, it, it's, it's hurting them so much spiritually if they understood the power of giving. And, and, the, and when you give, you give unto the Lord, okay? You have to understand, you're giving to God. You're letting go and you're letting God take control. And then you can't outgive God. You, it's impossible. If you, if you believe that Bible and truly believe that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him, which is what you're saying, then you have no problem in obeying God, giving to God, and trusting God to supply your every need just like he said in the scripture. Let me ask you this question, Mike, because as yes, this, Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before this evil and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you before the, my, the presence of my father and his holy angels. So part of this 
uh, is people are going to have to get themselves in position to not be ashamed to tell anybody and everybody that they are a servant of Jesus Christ, that they love him and they, you know, that they are following the Lord no matter what. You have to get in that mind frame. I mean, really you do if you're going to be a born again believer in Christ. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you know what the Lord does for us? He's the one that said he'll finish the work he began in us. That's right. Right? So so I don't have to finish anything, but I do have a commitment to going forward. I don't have reverse. I used to have a reverse, not anymore. I have forward. But you know what, Pastor Paul, by doing that, by going forward, the joy came. The joy was never there. <laughs> Until you start right. going forward and you're not looking. See, I have no backup plan. Right, because there is no other plan. Faith, you have no backup plan. That's right. right? There is no other plan. plan. That's right. Folks with a backup plan, they're going to deviate. And this is not the right time to deviate because we have the earth is changing. A lot of people want to know, how can I protect my family? I'll tell you what. You might want to sow some seeds of mercy, some seeds of grace, some seeds of loving your garden, because everybody's going to have to eat from their garden they're planting every single day. And I've noticed something in life. You will eat of your garden sometimes at the wrong time, right? But if it's something good, you can have it all the time. When the enemy is in the land, uh, those who sowed mercy or reap well, mercy yeah. from their enemies. Absolutely. The Bible, from Absolutely. Their enemies. Absolutely. So all maybe right. some the enemy come over, get everybody else but take care of you. Absolutely. You, yeah. you That's that's because that's the law of God, and that's how it that's will right. work. Uh, Mike, going forward, we got to talk about this. Uh, the terror victims in, in the Israeli attack, they're suing the Associated Press um, yeah. because the members of the Associated Press were embedded in this attack. Uh, yes, they were. You know, so um, we already have a bad problem. We don't trust the press because we can't. They lie so much to us. But what does this mean, uh, you know, when Israel is saying, hold it a minute, and it's not just the press. You know there was others involved in opening the gates. Somebody uh, had to have turned out the power, turned off the cameras, did something to allow this unbelievable assault on the nation of Israel. Well, you know what, Pastor? They were over there. They, many of them lived right there in that area. Right? Yeah. Um, one of the guys who died, he lived with them. He knew about what they were about to do and he didn't tell a soul he was there to record he was there to document which i do listen if, if you're a reporter working for a u.s based com uh, company right. right you don't follow the enemy into the camp of an ally not saying oh, that that is treason I, I, that's afraid. right that's, that's treason. treason that's what that is because Getting your favorite shot for a corporation is no excuse for allowing people to be mutilated like they were, right? Uh, in at any on any degree on any level. So, in my opinion, that's absolute treason. And uh, but you had a lot of those people. In fact, you have a lot of people right now in the enemy's camp doing the exact same thing. And these corporations are concerned about the almighty dollar yeah rather than the lives of people oh yeah for them, right? oh yeah they want they want their credit they want their ratings and everything else and they'll do anything to get them so it really displays that these guys report to get the confidence of the people so that you can continue to see them and pay for them that's They're the spirit of murder the lives of anybody mike that is the spirit of murder that's yes, murderous it yes it is yes it is they're, and they're, willfully so. They're, they're doing this willfully. Yeah, they're complicit in willfully. the murder of people, and, and they can't. Yeah. There's no righteousness at all. I don't care what they yeah. say. Well, I have a no. righteous oath to follow and follow the story. No, you, you have a yeah. right. To, you have to do the right thing at all times. No matter what profession you're in, you don't get a free pass because you're part of the press and you just can't help it. That's crazy. So we got the same thing going on in government. We got people who say yeah. that they're a Christian in government, and yet they will lie like a dog in front of everybody, yes. and yeah. they justify and say, well, I, you know, I have a private life in Christ, but publicly I have to be. No, I'm not buying it. Are you? No. It's just like this, uh, this, this uh, one of the most divisive subjects out there is abortion, right? Right. 
you can't take a stance on one side one day, flip it the other day because you found out your ratings dropped. <laughs> no. And it, 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 people should really start seeing through that. But you know what, Passball? Everybody's going to find out that one day we had one shot at this, yeah. this thing called life, and that we should have we should have come together during this time. Yeah. Not further. But unfortunately, there's some bad apples that will always get in between, get get with good people to try and keep them separated. Yeah. And those, those, well, according to the word of God, they'll be gathered, to, the tares are going to be gathered together first. That's right. I believe the kingdom of the beast, all this iniquitous stuff that's happening, they're, they're, getting, they're, they're getting together on this stuff, right? Their groups are getting bigger. Let them. Let them all jumble up together so they can be one big happy family and then kapoof, they're going to be thrust into darkness. That's, I, I believe that's part of the separation. It is not good to see. It's going to be it's going to be like pulling a scab off your body. It's going to hurt, right, to separate yeah. those strokers because they don't want to they don't want to separate. They have a joy of of, of perverting the righteous, um, but it is part of the end process, and we're victorious anyway in the end. Yeah, so that's it why it's indeed a process. It's Amen. A, it's a process. Amen. So, Pastor, well, thank you for doing what you're doing because in this process, a lot of people, if they have no clue of what's coming even when it sounds crazy if they have no clue they're going to have they're just going to be ineffective for everybody they're, they're going to be no help to anybody and they'll end up corrupting their own walk if they're scared enough because people are going to get scared but the key is not to act on fear not to walk by fear right right things scare me but i will never make a decision by fear amen. because god amen. did not give us the spirit of fear right? amen that's right but, but if a person doesn't know, they're going to be out of their minds. You they're know, that's why we have to be watchmen and um, share the truth of what's coming. We can see the sword coming. You know, we can see the enemy coming. We can see the destruction coming. And if we see it and we don't warn the people, God said he'll require their blood on our hands. Um, I don't want that. Do you, Mike? I mean, I mean, that's... Uh, I, I, I couldn't even live with myself. I don't, there's no if, way. If, if I just let a person fall into a hole, I can't do No, that. you can't. I can't do that. No, I, and that's, that's why at, that. sometimes at the end of the day, I ask myself, have I done everything I could do? Unfortunately, the answer is always no. I try yeah. as hard as I can, but I never can uh, do as, everything that I can. I, I, there's no way. Only Christ can go all the way and and he's carrying us but we do have a job to do we do have a responsibility to shine the light and to be faithful to god and to one another i thank you for always coming on these thursday nights even last week i knew you was under the weather um you know you're always on time you're always ready to go unless you get called away on something and uh, you know you're always a, a willing to share what you can and uh, be honest with the people, and yet not breach protocol as classified uh, information, always doing it in a very professional way and where people can learn how to read between the lines. And part of the reason we need the Bible, because the Bible kind of, there's no doubt about it, the Bible has the answers, and we just got to take a look at some things happening and how that applies to the Bible. When you said Joel 3, it's about to happen. I 1,000% put an amen on that. It's We're going to see this happen. It's already happening, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it, that, that process, it looks, it is, uh, it's becoming more and more, you know, uh, prevalent. Is, is World War Three already, are we already in World War Three, Mike? Uh, personally, I think we are. In most wars, uh, in the global wars, they were not, most people did not know they were in the global war. Right. Yeah. Uh, World War Three happened before Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Before okay. Pearl okay. Harbor. Take it that we far. We were drawn into it, and that's when we recognized, you know, there was a big problem out there. Well, right now the USA is not part of the Middle East as far as what they're doing, but the Middle East is at war right now. Yes. The Russia is at war right now. Yes. China is backing war elements right now. Iran is at everybody's at war right now. Right. And the USA again has not been drawn into it. Right now I, I can say this also. Um I do not desire another event that looks like Pearl Harbor. But no. for some reason we don't wake up until a big alarm clock goes off. 
right? We don't. Right. But I, I suspect that if we do not respond out of pure humanity, right, and, and to fulfill our role, because I believe the Lord set the United States just where it is, yep. not with all the evil stuff. But yeah. if we weren't here, if we know this world would be... Oh, it would be it would chaos. Be It'd be murders. It'd be... It'd be uh, God. It'd be an unstoppably horrible and evil. Yeah, it's bad yeah, enough. Worse. And, yeah, and, uh, I believe if we don't stand up to that role that we're given, right, the Lord's gonna wake us up again, just like Pearl Harbor. And unfortunately, it takes uh, it, it takes a, a pretty good pounding Amen. to get us to wake up and to work together to get beyond our differences. Amen. It is unfortunate, but. That's what happens. That's All right, Mike. You on back? I think it was around February nineteenth. You it's kind of the end of the broadcast. I believe it was last week, and you said in about forty days uh, we're going to be talking about there's there's going to be an event. Can you elaborate on that? Is that part of the? I can't. You can. I can't. I can. I can't. Okay. I can't. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. But 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 past all these are. These are going to be heavy times. But we're going to know. Let me ask you this. Remember last week? Remember last week that little comment I stuck in there? You said something about Putin. Yeah. And yeah. I said, yeah, Putin's a nice guy unless you're, you know, you're his opposition. Yeah, I know. And, and then, then what happened? And then that guy died the next day. He, he was killed the next day. That was awful. Yeah. Well, Mike, when you said you can't, I appreciate you saying that. I'm saying that I'm asking this. We'll probably know what that is then when, oh, yeah. when yeah. this takes place. We're going to talk about it on this show as it as it um, as we get close to that basketball yeah. because uh, we'll know we have heavy heavy things on the way. We have heavy wow. things on the way. Wow! And I I just pray people are prepped and ready, I'm really ready. You know, really ready. Folks, every week you should be here on these Thursday nights and tell others. I mean, this is the time I think to really tell other people to start listening in. People who've never listened before. I think in the next three weeks leading up to this 40th day process, plus beyond that, people need to know that uh, there's things happening that's affecting eternity. I mean, eternity. It's on the line. Lucifer is trying to dethrone Jesus Christ, and we are in the middle of it, and we can decide which side we're on, and people need to know some of the events are gonna happen. I had a dream where I seen the blood running out of people's faces. Let me tell you, and I, I shared this with you guys two years ago, and it was because they, Russia revealed a weapon, and the people that were there, they were diplomats. They, they, women were crying, and men looked like ghosts because of some type of weapon. And now this is before Russia invaded Ukraine. Mike, you remember me sharing yeah. this? I do. I even showing you a picture of some of the uniforms they were wearing. And you said, oh, those, uh, the, you knew what they were, NBC type. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I don't know if Russia has this weapon I've seen in the dream. But whatever it was, it, it, it brought men to their knees and to the, run the blood out of their body. Is, do you think they have such a weapon? Putin is so confident because he has not shown his hand. Putin right now, if I were to say it, it was it would sound terrible, right? But if but if I could describe Putin, I would say he has space dominance right now. I know that flies in the face of quite a bit. I know, right? But it's true. But Putin has not shown his hand. He hides bases very well. Wow. And then his uh, he has not used anything modern that I've seen in any of these conflicts yet. He's yeah. So he's holding back. He's holding he is, back. He's using everybody else's stuff. He's not utilizing his own equipment. If he were to pull out some of that equipment, you know, first of all, it, it, nobody would actually be able to see it because he has uh, he's gone far beyond, you know, but but in, uh, he's pressed physics all the way to its limits. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he's got he's got some of the greatest scientists in the world and uh and they've got um some of them have devious minds and so mankind is uh is going to suffer from that no doubt about that mike uh what are we going to be talking about next week i know we ain't to the 40 days yet so but what are we going to continue to see the sun blowing up or what are we going to be talking about well it'll be solar related um eight minutes it takes for a pretty good burst to reach earth but then 
there is another effect that takes probably within a 24-hour range. Earthquake. Uh, for example, the Atlantic Ocean, right? When that last one went off just a little bit ago, uh, in the Atlantic, there was a deep, they have probes down there, right? They check for ultrasonics. There was a deep vibration in the ultrasonics. Now, this happened right before certain eruptions. And so here we have those ultrasonics again. Those folks in Haiti and Chile, uh, Lord help them, because that's, that's a very volatile place. Haiti could actually shake totally apart. And this time, I mean, absolutely and totally apart. So we should Chile be uh, the same thing. Right? So, and of course, if Chile falls, Chile and Peru and those places fall, we don't have the stability of the cocos plate. And if that yeah. cork comes out, those in California, well, you, you know the rest of that story. So these these solar flares, the massive X flares, the pressure they're going to put on the Earth, we better watch the next 72 hours maybe. There could be a massive earthquake. Um, it's possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very. And, and again, BP Earthwatch, he made, he made people on the Internet realize that. I thought that was awesome. He did. Yeah, that's he right. He made people realize that because he wouldn't let that go. And so hopefully he's listening and he won't let go of the well, fact that I every think time he's... we have a solar flare, <laughs> that there are ultrasonics that begin to go off, causing um, uh, a heightened uh, anomalistic area in the northern pole and the Atlantic to cut up and get bigger. That's going to be a big problem. Well, I, I would say I know for sure he's watching right now. And he sent me an email 19 minutes before I went live to let me know that there, this X flare had happened. Uh, so I'm sure he's listening right now, and he'll start looking into where the vibrations are. So I'm glad. I'm really thankful he did that. I think he really uh, helped wake up the world. Now people are taking it serious that earthquakes follow major solar flares. And uh, wow. Yeah, they do. Haiti and Chile, I will be watching and praying for these folks. Yeah, they have no, they're not prepared, Pastor Paul, for that. They're not. Mike, I appreciate you coming on tonight and uh, giving us a great broadcast tonight with great information. Thank you for doing it for the cause of Jesus Christ to help people find the Lord. My honor, Pastor Paul. Well, the honor's always mine. Thank you. God bless, brother. God bless. You too. God bless. Mike from around the world, folks. Mike from around the world, and he's going to be speaking in this webinar that we got coming March the 22nd. So you absolutely have to have a ticket for it. It's called the Apocalyptic Signs. And he's telling you that those signs are here, that we're watching them right now, and that we're, we're sensing the coming of the Lord. But the Lord doesn't just come back and solve everything, folks. He comes back during a time of the most tribulation, most turbulent, most awful, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa upon the inhabitants of the earth. Are you saved? Well, Paul, I don't have to worry about it. I, I, uh, I'll wait and see how it works out. Then I'll make a last second decision. You better not plan on that. You better plan on getting right with God and start walking in faith and start walking in the joy and know that you know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I'll play a song right now. And I believe that if you're listening and you're not saved and you wanna be saved, if you would call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. This is your time to be saved. This is your time to call on the name of the Lord. This is your time to be ready because he is coming back. And you could just type in the chat room, I wanna be saved. Pastor Paul, I wanna be saved and let me pray with you. Because salvation is free. You just simply receive it and believe that there is only one Messiah. His name is Jesus Christ. I remember the night I first gave my life to Jesus. I can see a lot of people are saying, I want to be saved. I was lost and all alone and so undone. There were pieces of me here. He 
pieces of me there And I was so broken Then I asked Jesus Can you put me back together again? with God. You know this walk in life, it's full of many decisions. And we live with each and every one we make. But the best decision I ever made was when I really a beautiful song. Kevin Wilson helped me sing that song. And of course, Kevin wrote this song and it was a, it was an honor to be able to sing with him. And uh, we have, I have just noticed here and the, the, the chat room's going really fast here tonight. And there is a lot of people who are typing, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And I mean, a lot of them, it looks like more than normal. And that's this good thing because that means people are coming and they realize, they see they see the things that are happening around the world that it's not normal. It isn't the way it was when we were growing up. It wasn't how it was when I was in high school. It wasn't this way in the 80s, not even in the 90s. I mean, we're in a whole different level of prophecy. And it, it all says that it's all pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. He is coming. The dead in Christ are going to rise. You do realize that. And us that are alive and remain, well, we're going to be caught up forever to be with the Lord. And so shall we be with the Lord. He's coming for his church, for his bride. He's coming to take us home. You don't want to be left behind. Let's pray with these folks that want to be saved. All of us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your compassion for us, us humans, for humanity. Thank you, Jesus, that you came here and you felt and walked in our shoes and you conquered it, you lived above it, and you gave your life for us. 
that we could have a blood covenant that breaks the curse of sin, that shatters the chains of darkness and defeats Lucifer, Satan and his minions. You gave us the power. It wasn't us. It's what you did, not what we've done because we can't really do anything other than believe in you and follow you and shine a light for you uh, because of what you, Lord, have done for us. Now, Lord, I wanna be saved. I'm repenting of my sins right now or I'm coming back to God and I'm making things right with the Lord. I, I wanna be saved, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my soul. Wash me in the precious blood of the Lamb. I, I, I call upon the name of Jesus. I truly do because I believe. I believe. I believe. I do. I, I believe and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Christ died on the cross. I have no doubt in my mind that he rose from the dead. And I believe he ascended to heaven like the Bible says. And I believe he's coming back again as he said. So right here, right now, at this moment, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus, Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I am saved, I'm born again, I'm set free, I've been delivered, I've been healed, I'm, 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 I'm washed in the blood. I am saved in Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Welcome to the family, every one of you that have given your life to the Lord. Heidi and I are so happy for you. We're so excited for you. We want you to know we love you. And I want to encourage you to get baptized. I was so happy to baptize uh, a man last Sunday uh, under the big tent. Uh, who came, drove all the way from Southern Illinois to Florida just to get baptized, was turning around. I'm going to drive back home so he could go to work on Monday. But he said it was just time. He had given, he had gotten saved in one of these broadcasts like this one tonight, nine years ago. And he said, I needed to come. I needed to be baptized. And there was, uh, tears were on down his cheek as he fulfilled God's great commission and call in his life. And Look, you're saved tonight. You just got born again. But water baptism is powerful because it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is powerful. And then the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it, it absolutely gives you the fuel injection to walk in faith and victory on a daily basis. And he's the comforter. He's your guide. He is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. So I want you to get it all and get ready because we need you in God's front line uh, and we need your family to get saved. We want your whole household to be born again and we want everybody to have the victory that we have in Jesus. And for those of you who are giving your tithe and offering tonight, I pray a special blessing on you. I pray that God bless you going in and going out. He's making you the head and not the tail above and not beneath. You are blessed in the city and in the field, blessed in the fruit of your body, blessed. Matter of fact, you're blessed beyond measure. God said he would bless you if you give. Jesus said it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give in your bosom. He will bless you because you're one of the king's kids and you're doing what God has called us all to do. Thank you so much. I want to send a Bible to anybody that needs it for free. You just send an email here, uh, here in America. If you send an email in this lower 48 states to zd one at hotmail.com. That's www.missed.com. zd one at hotmail.com. And let us know you want a Bible and give us your address complete address, and we'll send it to you for free. If you're sick, let us anoint a prayer cloth with oil and send it to you by faith. And if somebody uh, is very, very ill and uh, need a miracle, well, we serve a God that does miracles. As a matter of fact, we've had miracles happen, so many of them, right here on this online church. And I've got to meet some of them even after God 
cured them, healed them, delivered them uh, from death's door. It's a great thing to know Jesus Christ. Well, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. What a great crowd we had. And tell others to watch this broadcast, the archives, to watch it because people are getting saved. And if you are watching the archives right now and you prayed and you gave your life to the Lord, just type in there, I want to be saved. And I'm just, I'm repenting of my sin. Just, just let us know that God has just saved you and join the family of God. God bless all of you. Thank our moderators for doing a wonderful job as always. And thank God for each and every one of you. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to do a video sometime during the day um, called The Blanket. I absolutely want you to watch it. It is an incredible uh, gift by the COT family that they sent to Heidi and I. And I want you to see what God has done. God bless all of you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.